stuff. I've named this Lights, Camera, and Action because of all of the work that our two Sparkies, Bob and John, have been doing to breathe the, the life into this airplane, make the heart start beating. And I just want to show you everything that's on here. So we're going to start in the wheel well. So there were portions of this that I didn't realize that the mic had shut off and run out of battery or whatever. What I'm talking about here is uh, walking into the wheel well and being able to turn on a hot bus, which will allow us to have lights in the wheel wells and a light for the, the crew as they walk in so we can see what we're doing without having to turn the batteries on on the aircraft. After you walk up to a cold airplane and turn on the wheel well lights, then you're ready to climb up into the cockpit and start turning on lights and for whatever purposes they are. So I'm going to turn this camera around. Okay, so John's going to show us what we go through to get this aircraft ready as far as the lighting goes. Hey, first thing you need to do is turn on the power. <clears throat> and so there's a switch up that takes the battery power in it and puts power into one of the distribution systems. And now you can hear the gyro winding up. You see some lights on the cockpit panel here that's indicating the status of the, the wheel. Oh, and so yeah, speaking of that, right now you see an unsafe condition uh, on the and nose. too safe. The, the nose switch needs adjusting. Uh, we'll wait till we have a little more altitude on the nose in order to adjust that switch. And then we'll have three in the green. But in this condition, if John pulls back on the throttles, because the nose gear is in an unsafe condition. So it thinks that the airplane is not ready to land because the nose gear is not down. So what he did, he pulled back on the throttles to, to idle power, and that's not enough to keep the airplane flying. And so there's a warning signal to, to warn that there's an unsafe condition. Right. Okay. So then the next thing is, after you turn on the power. The next item we want to look at is the rotating beacon. It's probably the singular external light that everybody sees on an aircraft because it's not only red and blinking, it's kind of moving around. So on this lower panel, there's a switch uh, designated as a rotating beacon. So you flip that switch up and then the rotating beacon is mounted on the rear of the aircraft on the top of the tail, horizontal back there and you'll see it flashing to ensure that that's actually happening. Okay, then the next thing on the list is the nav lights. Okay. The nav lights are the switch mark as nav lights you flip this switch up the nav lights on the wings will illuminate and you have both your red and green in the proper place out there and we also have the white light in the tail yeah okay so the next thing after those would be turned on would be the landing and taxi lights. But, okay, so now go ahead and extend that. The landing and taxi lights are extremely bright and really hot. So go ahead and retract it, John.
So World War II aircraft have what they call IFF or identify friend or foe. So there's some lights under the back of the tail that are in different colors and the, there would be an assignment for the day on a mission. And right here, John's going to turn on the lights for the IFF. Go ahead. In this turn particular aircraft, we have red, green, and amber. Okay. And some combination of those lights would be turned on as the code for the day for the friend or foe identity. Okay. So there's the, yeah, there's the IFF lights on. And something that I didn't know till a few minutes ago. Go ahead and flash them, John. That these could be used as a, yes, please. Used as a Morse code for ship-to-ship -ship communications rather than radio. Okay, and in addition to the formation lights on the bottom, this white light was also a form of communication, and you could flash this in Morse code to talk to other aircraft. Go ahead and flash it there, John. There you go. So you could do all kinds of things with these lights. Now, the, coming to the end of this, uh, John's going to turn on the formation light switch. John. Okay, and that was the very end switch. And so, and here's the formation lights. You can see that, see that one out there on the end of the wing. So, there's three on each wing, there's, so and there's the other three. So here's another section that I lost the sound on, but what John's demonstrating is, is there are formation lights on the top of the aircraft. There are three on each wing and three down the center line of the fuselage. And those were used by pilots so that they could see each other at night while they're in formation. And uh, we're missing two lights they arrived the day uh, later in the day after I shot this video. Another feature that was also not caught on audio was the aircraft is equipped with a light on the side of the fuselage that shines down the leading edge of the left wing in order to allow the pilot to check, see if there's ice on the wing when they're in, in uh, weather. Okay, so Dan and Max, what are you doing? We're fitting the passenger door. When it comes up, it's been binding along this edge. Well, how could that happen? Wasn't it installed before? Well, it was installed before, but it was binding for whatever reason. Um, I don't know personally what it was doing beforehand. I think the airplane got rained on and swole up. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, twisted and bent. So in other words, this, is, this was done and not very much care was done in fitting this door 50, Initially. 60 years ago. Correct. But it looks to me like you're coming really close to not having this fixed. I want to throw those mechanics under the bus. Yeah. But okay. <laughs> yep, another moment when the audio skipped out but in these next two segments you're going to see jan and max fitting and actually operating the door by the hydraulics it's really cool to watch and the, it was when you were first trying it it was binding about an inch and a half down from the actual lock position now it works really well it goes all the way up you can latch it easily and uh, they did a really good job of making room for that door to close.
Sorry about the audio problems. Um, it's all new to me. I'm no editor. I'm not Rebuild Rescue or Tally Ho or Goon Squad. I'm just me doing this. But uh, there was a couple of things that wasn't worthy of putting on film because it, I didn't get it right. There's a bunch of interior lighting for the cabin that's pretty groovy. Um, and uh, the guns. And when we get the nose on, I'll show you how cool the gun lights are. Really hope you enjoy the video. I hope you come back for more. Uh, I'm really hoping this spring we're rolling it out and starting the engines. There's dissenting opinions on that because it is the 80th anniversary of when it was born. Come back again. Please like, share, leave comments. Uh, it's all good. It's, it's fun doing this project. And again, thanks for watching. Oh, <laughs>